All right, with that next up, we're going to go to Senator Morlock, uh, file item number three, SB 1053. Senator Morlock is present. Welcome. Thank we you. look forward to your testimony. Appreciate uh, your willingness to hear this bill. So, Mr. Chair, colleagues, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> currently, registered nurses moving to California have to wait some 90 days to be approved by the state in order to pursue their profession. This is not the case in 34 states. These states participate in the nurse licensure compact. SB 1053 would have California become a member of this nurse licensure compact. There are many advantages to this privilege. In the case of an emergency, like a severe earthquake, numerous licensed nurses from the current 34 states could come to California to assist immediately. The standards maintained by the nurse licensure board are followed nationally and meet or exceed California's. California registered nurses could also fly to one of the 34 states when they have a shortage or an emergency. We have become a multi-state nation for most industries and with the Affordable Care Act, a nationwide approach is inevitable. Senate Bill 1053 also modernizes the medical care delivery system by allowing greater access to telehealth. This will benefit underserved communities. A significant number of military spouses would benefit from the simple interstate solution. Keeping individuals employed is critical now more than ever. It will improve California's emergency preparedness. Participating in the network is optional. Registered nurses can be California specific. And it gives California nurses more flexibility and freedom in developing their careers and resumes. Temporary assignments, six months or less, in other reciprocating states provides a broader personal growth opportunity and meeting a critical need in a location addressing an emergency allows for expanding a professional's job and purpose satisfaction. It also provides another way for California to develop better working relationships with other states. States with residents who may be subsidizing our state's need at this time. Mr. Chair, I applaud the consultant's thoroughness in addressing the, what I would call a merger and acquisition type of uh, concerns of adopting a new relationship. It occurs in the private sector too. However, I, I have a disagreement with some of the report's observations, but because of limited time, I won't go through them one by one. None of the issues raised, however, are insurmountable. This is optional, so the areas where California is unique can be addressed by certain individuals not adopting in. In other areas, I'm sure our state administrators are up to the challenge of integrating with a coalition of interstate like-minded professionals, proud of their industry and their roles in it. I believe the compact will improve the Board of Registered Nursing and the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. California already participates in a number of interstate commissions. And Mr. Chair, I have two witnesses, Rebecca Foch, the Director of State Advocacy and Legislative Affairs at the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, and Gary Cooper representing AMN Healthcare. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Thank you for your testimony. We're going to invite uh, uh, Rebecca Force to be the first person to speak in favor of the bill. I would note to her and to Mr. Cooper that you have three minutes in total, so hopefully you've coordinated your testimony together. Operator, would you ask, open up the line for Rebecca Foch, please. Please go ahead, Rebecca. Hi, hi, my name is Rebecca Foch. I'm with the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, um, and we were the drafters of the nurse licensure compact language. Um, as the senator stated, the, the compact essentially functions like a, similar to a driver's license in that a nurse has a license in the state that he or she resides in and then uses that license to practice in any of the other 34 contact states without having to get relicensed. Um, and the reason that this works so well for nurse licensure is that generally nurse 
nursing licensure is pretty standard across the country. Um, the education is standard. Um, every nurse must take the NCLEX before uh, she can get her licensure. And because of this uniformity, uh, it really lends itself to a compact. Um, and then the compact, and also it, it, one of its main focuses is on patient safety. Since boards of nursing are joining this compact and their concern is patient safety. So there is a criminal background check requirement and required, um, there's re uh, required um, sharing of information so to make sure that everyone, uh, so that everyone stays safe in the compact. And I think I'll stop there so that Gary has some time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Operator, would you open the line for Mr. Cooper, please? Mr. Cooper, you have two minutes and 40 seconds ahead, remaining. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gary Cooper, uh, representing AMN Healthcare, and we strongly support 1053. Uh, as some of you know, AMN is jointly headquartered in San Diego, and it is the largest, most innovative healthcare staffing company in the country. And they employ, deploy thousands of highly qualified licensed healthcare professionals to hospitals every week. Unfortunately, because the California is not a member of the compact, we have been able to deploy uh, staffing uh, employees to the different states, but the 34 member states that are in part of the compact have been doing it a whole lot easier. Prior to the current health crisis, California's shortage of nurses has been an enormous concern, and particularly the problem is it takes forever to get them licensed. 1053 would be very helpful in leaving that problem. After the COVID-19 crisis took hold in the United States, demand for nurses and respiratory therapists surged in California and New York. And in the past two months, AMN with its partners were able to deploy 10,000 healthcare professionals from all over the country. As you've seen this crisis worsen, you've seen governors plead for healthcare workers to come to their states, particularly in California and in New York. And because California was not a member of the compact, we had to get emergency orders to get those licensures waived, licensure requirements waived. And now we're very concerned that the licensure waiver, uh, the um, uh, executive order is going to expire pretty soon, and we're not sure whether or not those much needed healthcare workers will be able to stay in the states. Even after the pandemic subsides, the nursing shortages will continue to grow, and the strain on the healthcare system will only get worse negatively impacting patient care. If we can facilitate more and expedite the placement of healthcare workers, that would be a tremendous boon and to help the patients of California, I ask for your I vote on SB 1053. Thank you so much. Very good, thank you very much, Mr. Cooper. We're gonna now offer up an opportunity for those who are also in support of this legislation to so indicate by giving their name, their organization, and their indication of support. We're gonna to go to the three places in which we accept testimony today here in the room, 4203. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in support of the bill? Please come on up to the microphone. Network, a division of OCHIN in support. Very good. Anybody else here in room 4203 that would like to testify in support? Seeing no further hands, I'll go to room 2040. Anyone in room 2040 that would like to testify in support? Seeing no hands there, we're gonna to go to the operator and ask operator, if you can ask if there's anybody on the phone line that would like to speak in support of SB 1053 by Senator Morlock to please so indicate. To show your support on 1053, please press one followed by the zero and we will open up line 71. Please go ahead. 71, your line is open. Please unmute your phone, 71. Well, we'll go to line 60, please go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Janice Suhunal, and I'm speaking as co-chair of the California Defense Communities Alliance representing defense communities across California, as well as chairman of the Beale Military Liaison Council, speaking in support of Senate Bill 1053. Thank you very much. Operator, if you can go to Thank the next you. line. Thank you, and we will go to line 75. Please go ahead. 75, is your line muted? Please unmute your phone, line 75. 
Moving along, we'll go to line 14. Please go ahead. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Please, uh, your name, uh, organization, and your indication of support on this legislation. Hi, my name is Sharon Goldfarb. I'm Dean of Health Sciences at College of Marin. I'm also the president of California Organization of Associate Degree Nursing North, and I'm in full support of the bill. Thank you very much for your testimony. Operator, if you can go to the next caller, please. Thank you. We'll go to line 57. Please go ahead. Morning, Mr. Chair and members. This is Maria Sperber on behalf of the California Hospital Association in support. Thank you very much. This is line 31. Please go ahead. 31, please unmute your phone. Line 31, you are open. Uh, moving along, we'll go to line 39. Please go ahead. 39, your line is open. Bridge on behalf of the Association of California Healthcare Districts and support. Thank you very much. Line 52, please go ahead. Good morning. This is Kelly Mae Douglas on behalf of the Department of Defense and support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Line 76, you are now open. Mr. Chair and members, Amy Blumberg on behalf of the California Association of Health Facilities and Support. Thank you, Ms. Blumberg. Next. 56, please go ahead. Good morning, this is Sandy Person representing the Travis Community Consortium. We are in support. Thank you very much. Next caller. Line, thank you, line 17, please go ahead. Good morning, my name is Scott Zeem. I am the president of the California Association of Colleges of Nursing. We are in support of SB 1053, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next, operator. Line 81, please go ahead. Yes. Line 81, unmute your phone, please. Line 81, one more chance. We will go to line 38, please go ahead. Line 38, you are now open. We can't hear you, please go ahead. They are not responding. There's no other participants queued up. All right, operator, thank you very much. We're gonna now go to opponents of this legislation and give them the same opportunity to testify. Uh, this is uh, SB 1053 by Senator Morlock. Are there anybody who'd like to speak in opposition here in, in the room? I see a hand in the back, so please come on up. Good morning, I'm Thelma Harris, representing the Board of Registered Nursing. We represent approximately 500,000 registered nurses in the state of California. The Legislative Committee of the Board of Registered Nursing recently recommended to the full board, which will meet the end of this month, to oppose Senate Bill 1053. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. And I, I'm gonna ask a question in a moment, but let's finish with the uh, others testifying and then I'll ask you to come back up. Is there anybody else here in room 4203 that would like to testify in opposition? Seeing no hands, we're gonna to go to room 2040, anyone there? Seeing no hands raised, we're gonna to go to the phone lines. Operator, can you ask if there's anybody who would like to testify in opposition to SB 1053 to please so indicate? To show your opposition, please press one followed by the zero at this time, thank you. One moment, we do have a participant queuing up. And we will go to line 71, please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair and committee members, Curtis Lang with the California Nurses Association. CNA is opposed to SB 1053 and the implementation of nurse, nurse licensing compact. Join the nurse licensing compact would undermine public safety by inhibiting California's ability to set standards that apply to all nurses practicing in the state, restricting California's ability to require criminal background checks, and prohibiting California from knowing who is practicing in the state at any given time. 
Joining the compact would mean that nurses would be held to different standards despite working in the same state. If California joined the compact, nurses from Colorado would be able to practice here despite the fact that they are not required to engage in any continuing education at all. And if licensed before 2015, are not required to undergo a criminal background check or submit fingerprints to the DOJ. Contrary to the, to the intention of this proposed legislation, joining the nursing license or compact will have the effect of reducing access to the nursing profession for low-income Californians and limiting opportunities for upward mobility. In order to join the compact, California will be required to enact the 2015 NLC model legislation, which sets specific qualification standards for nursing uh, licensure. With regards to education, the model uh, dictates that in order for an applicant to obtain a multi-state license, she must have graduated from a board-approved RN licensure program. While this may seem innocuous, the key word here is graduated. The alternative routes to licensure discussed above include the 30-unit LVN to RN option and the military experience option, and they are non-graduate programs. Nurses who take advantage of those routes to licensure have not graduated from a board-approved program, and so they would be ineligible for licensure under the compact. Also, evidence does suggest that adoption of the NLC does not actually make nurses more mobile. Compact licensure does not allow for completely unencumbered movement across state lines. The NLC permits a nurse to hold only one active compact license at a time in her primary state of residence. For these reasons, we urge your no vote today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Operator, can you ask if there's anybody else who wishes to testify in opposition to SB 1053, please? To testify in opposition to 1053, please press one zero, and we will go to line 72. Please go ahead. Good morning, Chair and members. Kirk Blackburn on behalf of the United Nurses Association of California, UNAC, in opposition. Thank you very much. Next caller, operator. There are no other participants queued up. As a final reminder, please press one zero. And we will go to line 75. Please go ahead. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you. Are you here to testify uh, on SB 1053? I am. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, I if you could just give your name, your organization affiliate, and your position on the bill. My name is Joy Deffenbaugh. I'm here on behalf of AARP and its 3.3 million members in California. We strongly support SB 1053. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for providing your testimony. Operator, is there anyone else who wishes to testify on SB 1053? Could you ask them to please so indicate? Please uh, indicate by pressing one zero. And we do have one queuing up, one moment. We will go to line 38. Please go ahead. Line 38, your line is open. Please unmute. Hi, I wasn't given a, a line, so I'm not sure if this is my line or not, but this is Daniel Rietti with Pioneer Healthcare Services, and we support the bill. Thank you very much for your testimony. Operator, is there anybody further who wishes to testify on this legislation? We have. One line, uh, line 70, please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Lee Natividad, AMP Staffing Network, we support the bill, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Oh. No other part, whoops, we just got one, another one, and we'll go to line 31, please go ahead. Good morning, uh, Tammy Dilley, AMN Healthcare, and I support the bill. Thank you for your testimony. Operator, any, anybody further on the lines? Not at this time. All right, thank you for everyone's patience on that. Uh, we'd like to bring the matter now back to the committee for questions or comments. Members, I have Senator Leva, Senator Pan, Senator Hill. Senator Leva. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. I have a couple questions. Your first uh, witness, Senator Morlock, said that licensure is pretty standard across the states. But it sounds like from the opposition's uh, testimony that in other states you you don't have to graduate from a board approved program. So I was just hoping someone could give me a little clarification. Thank you, Senator Leva. Uh, 
Mr. Chair, is Rebecca Foch still on the line? Um, yes. Yeah. Ms. Foch, did you hear yeah, the question yeah. from Senator Leva? I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome to respond. Yes. Yeah, so uh, nursing licensure is pretty standardized across the country. Um, what the opposition was referring to is some states have um, certain exceptions to uh, graduating from nursing school in order to get a license. Um, this could be uh, maybe if it was a former military and then they are able to use some of their education and work from military to transition into a um, either a LVN or a nurse in that way. So there are some um, some differences in that respect. Um, but it, it's important to note that that has no bearing on the compact. If, if California is requiring uh, or sorry, allowing different avenues to licensure, that would remain. Nothing would change with that. It's just that those nurses who do have not graduated from a um, board approved nursing program nursing school, those nurses just wouldn't be eligible for a multi-state license. They're still eligible, I would assume, for the California license. It wouldn't change their current status at all. It's just that they're not eligible for the multi-state license. And the purpose from that for that is that there are differences in that respect across the country, and there could be even more changes in the future. So in the compact, we they want to make sure that all of the states can feel confident that, you know, as a minimum education requirement, the nurses have graduated from um, an approved nursing school. So uh, let me um, get this straight. So if sure. I graduate, if I do not graduate from a board approved program, I currently would not be allowed to have a multi-state state license. Correct. You would just have, if you were a California um, citizen, you would just be eligible for a California license, not have the multi-state privileges. Correct. So other nurses in other states who don't graduate from a board approved program would not be allowed to be a part of this compact if California were to approve this? Right. It, 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 it is the same for any state. So if let's say, and I'm, I don't know this, but let's say that Texas um, allows nurses who have, um, uh, I don't even know. I, I, so sometimes there are programs so that for an LVN to become uh, RN, but perhaps they haven't actually graduated from a nursing school in order to do that. I can't think of another example off the top of my head, but it, it is applied consistently throughout this state. So every nurse that current that has a multi-state license has to have had graduated from a board-approved nursing program, a nursing school. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Moderator, could I hear from opposition if they feel the same way about that? Or Mr. Chair, I guess I should ask you, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, operator, we had, uh, two, uh, we had uh, two witnesses who testified in opposition from the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the nursing association. Can you ask if they're still on the line, if we'd like to invite them to come back and, and provide additional responses to Senator Leva? Are, is there lines that, that listed as a co-host? Just, um, I don't believe so. Uh, uh, Senator Leva, do you recall their names? I don't. I apologize. Okay. Um, uh, operator, if you could ask if there's anyone representing the nurses uh, union on the line, if you uh, they could so indicate, so we could invite them to respond. Okay. Um, anybody from the nurses association, please press one zero. We will go to line 71. Please go ahead. Seventy-one, your line is open. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Leva. Um, yes. Yeah, so, could you identify yourself, uh, please, sir? Yes, my name is Curtis Lang with the California Nurses Association. So, as I was mentioning before, with regards to education, uh, the model of legislation dictates that in order for an applicant to obtain a multi-state license, she must have graduated from a board-approved RN pre-licensure education program. And so that means that alternative routes to licensure that we have just been discussing, military or the 30-unit LVN to RN option and the military experience, experience option, those are non-graduate programs. 
So nurses who take advantage of those routes to license serve have not graduated from a board approved program, and so they would not be eligible for a license under the compact. Thank you. And one last question. Did I hear uh, you, Senator Morlock, say that there are 34 uh, states that are part of the compact now? Correct. Okay. Thank you. No more questions, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you, Senator Leva. We'll go to Senator Pan. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, question uh, in terms of if, so if California joins the compact and there is a nurse who is in another, who was, I guess, originally licensed in another state in the compact and um, unfortunately is, uh, has to be disciplined in the state of California, um, does the nurse lose her license? It could be him, her, or him license across the whole compact, just California, or can California not act on this? So what's, what happens in terms of disciplinary oversight over anyone practicing in California? So if they're licensed in Colorado under the compact and they now practice in California, can California sanction that nurse or do they have to wait, do they have to go to, Calif to Colorado to have them sanctioned? Thank you, Senator Pan. Mr. Chair, may I ask if Ms. Foch could answer that question? Uh, Operator, if you can ask Ms. Uh, Foch to open up her phone line so she could respond to Senator Pan's question. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Thank, thank you for that question. That's a great question. Um, so the way that discipline works in the compact is the, the state where the nurse is licensed. So we'll use that Colorado, um, California example. Um, so the State, so Colorado is the only state that has jurisdiction over that nurse's license um, because they are the state that granted that license. So they are the only ones that could revoke the license, suspend the license, or discipline that license. Um, if they do do that, if it is disciplined, then the privileges to practice in any compact state for that nurse are suspended until the discipline has been, um, has ended. Now, that being said, if that Colorado nurse is practicing in California and there is a harm that happens in California, California is able to still discipline the nurse in the sense that California can revoke that nurse's, we call it a privilege to practice, but it's the nurse's ability to practice in California. So um, let's use an example. Let's say that the nurse is uh, diverting medication. So if California... Um, if, if, if California finds that that nurse has diverted medication, they can then, if California can choose to, it, they, I mean, it could choose to not act. Um, more, more, most likely it would, and it, it could choose to suspend um, that privilege to practice while maybe the nurse does a substance abuse, produce, um, uh, substance abuse program, or California could completely revoke that privilege. When California, when that's going on, that investigative phase, and when California is disciplining the Colorado nurse, California has to communicate that information to Colorado because that's where the nurse is originally licensed. Colorado then can use the information from California and discipline the nurse's license. So maybe Colorado would also suspend the license um, based on what happened in California. But that share, that information sharing is a requirement of the compact. And again, when Col if Colorado um, did discipline the nurse based on California's um, investigation, which is typical, that's what happens in the vast majority of cases, um, then while that nurse is under discipline, her privileges to practice in um, any of the states would be suspended. Um, so. So that's kind of the um, the dynamic between if you're a state that issues a license or if you're the state where that nurse is practicing. Well, I, I guess what I'd say is, I mean, I think there are a lot of issues. Uh, I think there's an outline and analysis that uh, need to be examined. I think discipline certainly is one of those in terms of California being able to exercise oversight over the health professionals who practice in the state. and. To be dependent on another licensing board, I think it's a bit concerning, and I think needs much further examination, as well as many other issues. I think that were raised uh, in the testimony. So, um, 
I, I, you know, we have a process here in this committee um, led by our chair and also uh, both here in the Senate and the Assembly in terms of reviewing the various boards and so forth. Um, well, I certainly appreciate, um, uh, you know, this bill being presented today. I, I think uh, this needs to be a much more uh, thought out uh, and carefully reviewed proposal. And I do have significant concerns about, uh, uh, you know, if, let's put it this way, you talk about nationalizing, um, uh, the, the, the power to license is something that's granted to the state uh, that's under the 10th Amendment, the Constitution, uh, and I think that uh, we need to honor that. And so uh, I, I, at this point, unfortunately, I'm not able to support the bill. I think it needs much further work. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pan. Senator Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you. You've answered my questions that uh, other colleagues have uh, asked, but I, I just wanted to uh, just make a little comment. I, I think as you've indicated in your first statement that there are many advantages to this, and I think there could be, and that there are potential advantages for, for California. But in looking at the challenges that are faced with the legislation and moving to a, a, a compact uh, with other states for RNs and LVNs, uh, I, th I think we're, at the end of the day we would be deferring to the lowest common denominator, and California prides itself on the tremendous health care we have, and certainly RNs and, and uh, LVNs are of the highest quality. And uh, I think it's because of the standards that we've set and the boards that we have and the regulations that we apply. So I, uh, I, I would just be fearful that we would be going down a, a slope, but at this point, without the safeguards, it could be a, a, in the legislation. So unfortunately, I won't be able to support it uh, today, but thank you. Thank you, Senator Hill. Any other comments or questions? I'd like to invite Ms. Harris from the Board of Registered Nursing to come back up. Ms. Harris, thank you for your testimony today. It was short. I wanna ask you a few follow-ups. Uh, so there's been some uh, concerns raised about the delays that it takes for a, a, a someone who's a nurse in another state to come here and to practice. Could you speak to that, please? I think what we're talking about are the verification of the license for a, a person coming in from another state. Uh, we do have a process in place that takes approximately 10 weeks to uh, verify licensees that are coming in from other states. And one of the reasons our process is the way that it is is because of the high standards that we have in California. It is not just an easy checklist of uh, showing up and filling out an application, sending in the money, and then it's stamped. So our process is lengthy only because of the standards that we have in place and making sure that the quality is kept at the level that we have today. Uh, another follow-up question, uh, Ms. Harris. Um, the, uh, the analysis indicates that to be a, uh, a registered nurse within the compact that you have to have a social security number. Are you f familiar with how many uh, nurses that we have licensed in California that, that do not have a social security number? I am not familiar as far as the exact number, but that is something that is required in California, yes. That is not required or is required? It is required in California, is, yes. Uh, so, uh, you can't use a federal ID number? No. In place, okay. Um, and. Uh, Lastly, can you speak to the issue of standards in a little bit more detail? What is it that we are trying to uh, acknowledge or verify when you do a review of a nurse who's been licensed in another state? Well, why does it take 10 weeks? Well, and what are you looking for exactly? The reason that it takes 10 weeks is that in California, we require, first and foremost, we require that the nurse submit transcripts. Those transcripts in California must come from the institution. In other states, the nurse can just send those transcripts into the board that is approving their licensure. We want those transcripts to come from the state or some, for us, other countries, from the institutions because we've seen a lot of fraud. We have a tremendous amount of fraud that is dealt with within our board right now because there are many people who want to come into California and practice. And it's our responsibility to protect the consumers. So it does take a long time. We have to have transcripts. We also require uh, fingerprints. Those fingerprints are not shared from state to state because it's federally done. And so this takes uh, a length of time to get all of this process done in place. Again, assuring that the quality of the standards are high. Other states, for whatever reasons, do not comply to this, but this is something that we do. 
And finally, Ms. Harris, could you speak to the issue of, the, of nurse shortages? We've heard lots of comments. There's been many commentaries. I know the analysis references some statistics in that respect. Can you speak to the issue of uh, are we in balance in California in terms of nurses going through our training programs, license and practicing here versus what the need is? Yes, Senator Glazer, thank you for asking that question. I know there's been a lot of talk, not only amongst us here within the legislature, amongst you within the legislature, but also within the media in reference to nursing shortages. There are nursing shortages in specific regions of California. There are not nursing shortages in areas such as in Southern California. Uh, the forecast that has been given to us from our UCSF researcher shows that there will be an overabundance of licensed registered nurses in Southern California within the next couple of years. So there are regional differences. Some of those areas where we see the shortages are in the areas where we have rural uh, nursing, but that has nothing to do specifically with us deciding whether or not nursing schools are going to continue to produce nurses that usually stay within 50 miles or so from the places that they graduate. What that has to do is with the institutions being able to recruit nurses to come and live into some of those areas. And would you say, Ms. Harris, that those same shortages in the, those isolated areas apply to other areas of healthcare, uh, physicians, for example, uh, the, uh, is that the, the, the same type of an issue? It's not that we don't have enough doctors, it's that we don't have enough doctors in certain places in California? Absolutely. I wouldn't try to speak for the doctors, but I can say that for our nurse practitioners, I know that we always look at the fact that most of those areas use nurse practitioners because they cannot recruit doctors to be there. And because of that, uh, there is a great need for nurses to be, to, to, because the nurse practitioners are registered nurses first, and then they become registered nurses. So that is a shortage just there. Those nurse practitioners that work in those areas, a lot of them, once they get to a, a point where they're retiring or moving on, the recruitment efforts to get people to move into those areas is very, very difficult. And finally, Ms. Harris, obviously we're uh, currently in a pandemic and uh, the governor has made calls for healthcare professionals to come and, and uh, be available to assist. And, uh, uh, can you speak to uh, whether or not, and I understand through the analysis that 1,600 uh, nurses that you have processed under his executive order emergency powers to uh, allow to practice here in California. Is that correct, 1,600 so far? I'm not sure if that number is correct. Uh, that is through IMSA, that's the, Emer I think it's the Emergency Medical Service Authority. I may have the acronym incorrect, but that does not come directly through us. We are aware of what is going on, uh, but that does not come through us. But are you aware of any current shortages in California due to the pandemic in terms of nurses, the availability of nurses? No, we are not. As a matter of fact, there are some places that have had to lay off nurses because they have not needed the nurses who were not skilled uh, to work in the intensive care units or work with the people who were coming in with COVID. Although we have uh, many facilities that are ready and waiting, uh, there has not been anything that we have been uh, told about as far as a shortage of registered nurses being available. Ms. Harris, thank you very much for your additional testimony. Senator Dodd. Uh, yeah, you know, this is, this is something that uh, is, got my attention. I, I had some, uh, you know, real concerns about it, still have some concerns about it. But, uh, you know, I have Travis Air Force Base in my, you know, in my district. And I get a number of calls uh, throughout the year from the, uh, you know, the, the, the head of the, uh, the base and the medical, you know, and say, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're bringing in all this top military from all over the world. Their wives are, uh, for example, or husbands, with regards, you know, with regard to you know wh whoever's in in the service, saying, "Hey, they don't pass, you know, they don't pass because of the California test." And I, while I hear you, and I hear people say we're the best in the world, you know, we always think we're the best in the world in California. That's just kind of who we are. I'm not sure that's real. I'm not sure that's anecdotal, and I think that we need some perhaps third party verification of these standards and why they're so much better than uh, other states where people are allowed uh, to practice. And so I, I probably, I'm gonna give you a courtesy vote today uh, on this because I wanna see the dialogue continue and I wanna talk to uh, uh, the CNA and others who were opposed to this, but I look at the long list 
of people that are in support of this bill, and it starts making me wonder, yeah, what are we doing here? Are we protecting the system that we have here in the state of California, or are we advancing policy to uh, create more opportunities for people to get the health care that's needed? But I do reserve the right, uh, you know, in uh, the vote you know, on the Senate floor to change my mind on this based on further conversations. Thank you, Senator Dodd. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Senator Leva. I just wanted to say that I think this is, there's a lot of um, issues here, um, good, bad, indifferent. Wouldn't this be better taken up under sunset review so we could have a full debate? Uh, I don't know when the sunset review is, but maybe this, that would be the better time. Thank you for your comments, Senator Leva. I'll note and I'll ask my staff to correct me, but I believe the sunset review for that board is up in 2021 next year. I hear an acknowledgement from my staff, so that's a direct answer to your, your inquiry. All right, if there's no further comments or questions, I want to let Senator Morlock the opportunity to close, and then I have some, uh, some closing comments as well. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks for the discussion. Uh, as I stated earlier with the consultants' uh, commentaries, I, I think there are a few areas where they're not accurate. or uh, they're, So with that, I appreciate the questions that were asked that you were allowed Rebecca Foch to, to answer some of those questions. Um, I will say that, just to point out a couple, um, one, or just one, the background checks for the compact are done by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI. So uh, we, we would work with the Department of Justice here in California. So you have a pretty high standard for uh, who uh, is approved to be a nurse uh, in 34 states and California. As to the concern about having enough nurses that was twofold. One, we're, we're, we're producing enough, was the statement by Ms. Harris. Uh, so if that's accurate, then we have nurses that could help the other 34 states, it gives them an opportunity to be employed. It also gives them the opportunity to do telehealth, which is what this bill provides, the authority to help those in underserved communities where, you know, we're having issues. We don't have enough hospitals, don't have enough clinics. So uh, the other point was that many nurses have been laid off during this pandemic, and that's because we've asked our hospitals and our medical practitioners just to focus on one thing. We've, we've made um, so many hospitals, in fact, just focused on COVID and nothing else, nothing optional, no optional surgeries, nothing else. So we, we've, we've kind of been decimating a, a profession that uh, we need to put uh, back together, but that's a discussion for another time. Mr. Chair, the Nurse Licensure Compact has been functioning for 20 years. New Jersey uh, just approved their legislation last year and probably in the nick of time because it helped bring a lot of nurses to New Jersey to deal with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The majority of the concerns raised, the consultant's thorough analysis can be resolved, I believe, through the awareness that this opportunity is optional or with minor corrective uh, administrative regulations or legislation in the next session. These are not difficult issues. SB 1053 has an impressive list of supporters. From the U.S. Secretary of the Army to some 2,200 individual registered nurses, and just recently, not on your list, the Red Cross. It's not a matter of if California moves in this direction, it's a matter of when. With COVID-19, there couldn't be a stronger motivator. Consequently, I encourage and I vote on SB 1053. Thank you, uh, thank you, Senator Morlock. Uh, I wanna uh, express my appreciation to you for, st for stimulating a very important and uh, constructive conversation today uh, about, this, uh, about this issue. Uh, and I know that the motivation that you have is, a, is a, an, an admirable one to uh, improve the uh, availability, accessibility of our healthcare system of those who practice, uh, both for consumers and for those who are engaged in it. And I, I think it's a very important conversation to have. I, I note Senator Dodd's uh, remarks about trying to uh, dig down deeper on some of these issues to make sure that we're not just creating an artificial barrier, but one that is constructive, that, that meets California standards, but also is, it, it keeps in mind uh, the desire to uh, help those who practice in that field and those who consume it uh, to make our world a, be a better place. Uh, certainly the concerns that you have raised and others have raised over many years about how much time it takes 
uh, for a, a nurse who has practiced in another state to come here and practice uh, is something that bears review. And I will note that we have a review in mind. Uh, in 2021, uh, the Board of Registered Nursing is up for sunset review. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, it means that if, if that review is not completed uh, on time, uh, that board would go out of existence. So there's a lot of pressure to have a thoroughness of the work that they're doing, uh, the time it takes them to review applicants uh, who want to practice here, whether that's reasonable or not, to examine the issues of fraud uh, that, that, uh, that they are charged with uh, enforcing. There's a lot of issues that go into that review. And I think that this debate here today is the kind of conversation we should have in that review to see whether or not uh, we are creating uh, artificial barriers uh, that uh, limit the access to the quality health care that we all want uh, in our state. And so for me, with your legislation, I would be comfortable putting it, uh, the pause button on it th today uh, and giving us the chance to, to continue the conversation and the dialogue and engagement that we will do through our sunset review next year. And so uh, for me today, it's uh, not yet uh, of a vote, uh, not a no vote, but a not yet uh, of a vote. And uh, I want to again express my appreciation for your engagement on this conversation, uh, and I'm sure it will continue into the future. Thank you very much. So with that, I want to see if there's any uh, motion to be made. Senator Chang. So moved. All right, the bill has been moved, and we'll ask the secretary to call the roll. Please remember to turn on your microphone so that it can be recorded correctly. SB 1053, the motion is do pass to appropriations. Glazer? No. Glazer, no. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Archuleta? No. Archuleta, no. Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Hill? No. Hill, no. Leva? No. Leva, no. Pan? No. Pan, no. Wilk? Aye. Wilk, aye. What's the uh, the count there? The measure has four I votes and five no votes. Okay. Uh, Senator, unfortunately today at least the measure will be held here in committee uh, four to five. Uh, we generally as a courtesy always provide a motion for reconsideration, uh, although we don't have any uh, hearing uh, scheduled uh, for us in terms of meeting our, our house of origin deadlines. But uh, if there's no objection, uh, I will... Uh, uh, take that as a motion to cons uh, reconsider, Senator, if you'd like. Maybe I could have a, a recount, Mr. Chair. A recount. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have paper ballots. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, w w without objection, we'll, the matter will be uh, reconsidered, uh, and uh, and we'll move on to the next uh, next bill on our agenda.